Hyatt Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, always 1776.com. Today is August the 28th, 2020. Let's talk a little bit more about this Jacob Blake case, now that we know some more facts. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we have just had a movement here in the United States. A lot of raised consciousness and awareness about domestic violence and sexual harassment. Right? The Me Too movement has had a lot of women learning that other women were also victimized. It's brought down some big names. Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby. For too long, domestic violence was pushed into the background, ignored. Right? People like Jackie Gleason, I'm not saying Jackie Gleason was a batterer, but he would make a fist and, you know, cock it at his wife and say, Alice to the moon. And that was supposed to be comedy. Well, let me just say this, and uh, I'm biased. Understand, I'm a divorce attorney. I've prosecuted domestic violence trials. I don't understand how we're ignoring the domestic violence part of this Jacob Blake case. Right? I know family members have been on TV. I know we're seeing selfies everywhere portraying this guy as a family man and stuff like that. Understand, his girlfriend, or at least a woman who he was involved with in the past, got an order of protection against him. The reason why the police were over there was because Jacob Blake arguably was violating the order of protection. His ex called the police. This is a domestic violence call to which the police responded. So, in today's New York Post, and I'm going to put the link so you can read it for yourself in the description to this video, they talk about the criminal complaint for domestic violence that had been filed against Jacob Blake. Understand, this is a guy who NBA players are boycotting for. Right? Understand, this is a guy who people are out protesting and burning cars for. Well, let's talk about the allegations against him made by his ex, right? I'm just going to read from the New York Post piece here. The victim, who was only identified by her initials in the paperwork, told police she was asleep in bed with one of her children when Blake came into the room around 6 a.m. and allegedly said, I want my shh. The word ends in T, the record states. She told cops, Blake then used his finger to sexually assault her, sniffed it, and said, smells like you've been with other men. The officer who took the statement said she had a very difficult time telling him this and cried as she told how the defendant assaulted her. The alleged victim said 
Blake, here's the quote, penetrating her digitally caused her pain and humiliation and was done without her consent. And she was very humiliated and upset by the sexual assault. So please, if vice presidential candidates are going to make public statements, about how the police should be criminally prosecuted. Let's at least also acknowledge the domestic violence allegations made against Mr. Blake. A story broke earlier today that his handcuffs were removed in prison, excuse me, in the hospital he was handcuffed to his bed. People were outraged by this. Now if the woman he assaulted was your daughter or your sister, wouldn't you want this guy to be handcuffed at the hospital? Understand too, if the police were responding to a domestic violence call by his battered, dare I say, raped ex, wasn't Blake's behavior completely unacceptable in our society? He's violating an order of protection. In her call, she says, He's where he's not supposed to be. Then when the cops show up, he physically scuffles with the police officers, right, multiple cops. He gets tased. He gets tased. Then he turns, goes to his car door with a cop within an arm's length of him. In other words, if he has a dangerous object in his hand, the cop who's an arm's length away is in danger. Now we come to find out that on the driver's side of his car was a knife. Folks, you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. I have no plans of going out and protesting Harvey Weinstein, in favor of Harvey Weinstein. If, as he's reaching for a knife after getting tased and scuffling with police officers, he gets shot multiple times. Right? I don't understand why articles about Jacob Blake aren't leading with the criminal complaint against him. As family members are trying to portray this guy as some civil rights icon, I don't understand why the press isn't saying, gee, tell us what you know about the domestic violence allegations contained in the criminal complaint filed against him. Let me say this too, and it's just an unfortunate part of life. A lot of victims of domestic violence decide they're not going to prosecute the person who assaulted them. I don't want people to read too much into the handcuffs being taken off Jacob Blake while he's at the hospital. That might be his ex deciding that she's had enough of him since he, according to reports, is supposed to be paralyzed right now. He might not be as big of a threat as he was before he was paralyzed. Right? She might have decided not to go through with prosecuting him. But understand, the handcuffs when he's at the hospital 
weren't limited to his interaction with the police. No, there was an open warrant for his arrest for sexually assaulting, digitally penetrating his ex without her consent. And understand, this guy shows up at 6 in the morning when his ex's child is in the room. So I've read the comments. I understand uh, people have concerns about police brutality. I understand this looks like it's similar to what happened to Breonna Taylor. Okay, fine. But don't spend too much capital on this guy who's been accused of domestic violence. Let me point out too that in the criminal complaint, they asked his ex, has he done this before? And she says yes, but only when he's very drunk. Right? He must have been very drunk at six in the morning because that's when he did his latest attack. If you're a battered woman, you can sense the pattern here. Right? This guy is a repeat offender. When the police respond to the domestic violence call, right? His ex gets an order of protection. This guy with three kids in the car violates it. Let's go one step further. There's an order of protection against him. And he has a knife. In the real world, this guy's a threat. So, of course, he scuffles with police. He gets tased. We find out there's a knife in the car on the driver's side. Why did he have that knife? Who was going to attack him? The kids in the back? Come on. Let's be real. You know, the sad thing is that I don't even believe a lot of the protest was done with command of the facts. In other words, these facts are just dribbling out. But yet, people were prepared to riot, burn cars, cancel sports events. Right? Figure out who you're supporting before you give that support. Don't undercut the credibility of a movement against police brutality by supporting guys against whom orders of protection have been issued, who of course are back where they shouldn't be with knives in the car and are prepared to scuffle with police and then move toward the car where the knife is after being tased. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.